part five, teaching concepts. I am going to put this in the context of expository teaching or direct instruction. An advanced organizer is something that organizes and comes in advance of the lesson. Here you can see the general structure of what I am going to tell you about expository teaching. And you can pause. This is to be compared with discovery learning, which is coming in the next video. You can pause and read here. The superordinate categories would be perhaps direct instruction and less direct instruction. Direct instruction, expository teaching, less direct instruction, discovery learning, and two authors whose names you would associate with each one. It is a type of deductive teaching and learning. You define the concept and you use examples up front. Students look at these examples or this body of knowledge or clues and take away a specific answer. Deductive. Deductive thinking is Sherlock Holmes types of thinking where you look at a body of body of clues, the crime scene, and you come away with one specific answer. The butler did it. As I said, it starts with an advanced organizer up front. It organizes the information that is to be learned. It's advanced. It comes in front of the lesson. It uses direct instruction where the teacher tells students. By the way, Discovery Learning uses direct instruction as well, but in a little different format in different places. So don't think that Discovery Learning doesn't entail direct instruction. It does, just a little bit differently and placed a little bit differently. But you tell students exactly what they need to know, the definition, the defining attributes, etc., etc. Goes from general conclusions to specific facts deductive thinking. And again, just like Sherlock Holmes, general conclusion, there's a dead person here. Let's look at the facts and come to a conclusion. All right? You give them the big picture. This is what the concept is. Particular facts, the conclusion, they understand what that concept is. It uses direct instruction. By the way, Discovery Learning uses direct instruction too. I'm going to say that two or three times. It's planned redundancy. Hit the same idea many times in different ways but it is a well-defined path to a specific conclusion. That means it is like a train going down a railroad track, providing information choo -choo 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 -choo, to get you to this particular idea. All right, A well-defined path. You start with a definition. And again, use kid language, keep it simple and the defining attributes, as we said in a previous lesson. These are the essential characteristics, the rules or features. This must be here for it to be a concept. Again, use kick language. Break it down. Keep it simple. It's not what you say that makes you a teacher. It's what students know and learn that makes you a teacher versus a talker or a measurer. We need more teachers, less talkers, less measures in the field of education. You provide a prototypical example. This is the typical type. Not an outlier, but one that best represents the category and has all the defining features prominently displayed. And to be a good teacher, you don't provide simply one example. You provide many, 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 many examples of the thing, of the concept. So students can begin to see you're, they're hit over the head. They can see the defining attributes, what makes the thing a thing. You also need to provide some negative examples. Tell why it isn't. Things that are close but are not the concept. And emphasize the defining attributes. This cannot be the concept because it does not have these things or has those things. So link defining attributes to both the positive and negative examples of that concept. 12. Guided practice in some form. Students use both examples and non-examples and they explain why it is the concept and why or why not it isn't. And the teacher then you are able to acknowledge the correct responses and give students feedback. And I use the example, raise your thumb if you think this is a mammal. Yes, that's correct. Thumbs up if you... No, that's right. It's not a mammal. So guided practice, you're going through it with the class. 
and that gives you a sense of informal or formative assessment. Guided practice, and again, guided practice and extension, students ask students to provide examples and non-examples of the concept and explain why. Who can give me another example of a mammal? Tell me why you think this is a mammal. So these are kind of lumped together. Just, I want you to know that sometimes guided practice takes more than one form and you can extend it. Independent practice is where students somehow manipulate the idea or use, extend the concept in some way. This sometimes is as homework or activities or assignments. Know that learning is never complete. Just as in these videos, there's planned redundancy in your teaching. You always have planned redundancy. Planned redundancy again, Johnson lesson plan format for teaching concepts using direct instruction, the purpose statement, what they are to learn, input, definition, defining attribute, positive, negative, guided practice, and an activity where they extend or enhance or manipulate the concept idea in some way. And part five, expository teaching.